And so as we began to create our platform or our outline for what we would do as our education agenda, we did it with a number of guiding principles. The first is we want accountability. We want to ensure not just that results are accountable, but that the programs delivering them are accountable as well. Because the lack of accountability slows down progress and quite frankly leads to waste. The second is we want to encourage investment in education. And not just higher education, but education throughout the platform, throughout the, the, the entire spectrum. And the third is empowerment. We want to empower parents so that every parent in America has the opportunity to do what I did this morning. And that is the blessing of dropping off my children in an environment of our choosing. And with that, we developed our ideas. I'm not going to go through all 12 of them. I'll make those available on our website and through the media and the writing. But there are some that I'm really proud of. And the first is the creation of a universal education tax deduction. Right now, most of our tax deductions in our tax code are geared towards higher education and higher education costs. There is no reason why every American should not receive a tax deduction for the money they spend on their child's education, be it homeschooling, be it a pre-K program, be it a private school. Every American should be entitled. Every American should have a tax deduction that they can take every single year that covers at least all, if not most, of the costs that they incur out of pocket for their children's education. And what this will do is that this will incentivize people to invest increasingly in education. This could cover everything from school supplies to supplemental educational materials that you use, for example, in tutoring. The second part of our plan that we believe in is, uh, is improving parental access to school performance information. That's part of our accountability platform. Right now, federal law requires that schools report every single year their yearly progress. That should be made readily available to every parent across the country. That, th that they would have access to that information so that we can, everyone can know, not just parents, but society at large can know how schools are performing, how schools are investing the funds that they have at their discretion and, are, and, are, and at their disposal. The third thing that we can do to improve school choice is a federal corporate income tax credit. We have that here in Florida. The Florida income tax credit for corporations is one of the things I'm proudest of that we've been able to grow during my time in the Florida legislature, thanks to the leadership of Governor Bush and those that have followed. It is an extraordinary program. It should be available at a national level, where every corporation is allowed to deduct a portion of the corporate taxes they pay to the federal government and instead use it to sponsor a child who meets a, who meets a certain criteria so that that child can use that money to attend a school of their choosing and of their parents' choosing. I think we need to protect our teachers. And we protect them by creating incentives for states to create a program to cover their liability costs in K to protect them from frivolous lawsuits in the classroom. It's tragic to see, but across this country, teachers have increasingly become the subject and the target of law frivolous lawsuits. In Florida, we provide that. That should be provided nationally. All states should cover the cost of, lit of, of um, litigation insurance for their teachers and instructors. We have a critical shortage in this country on the issues of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. The first thing we need to do is encourage more people to go into that and to create more opportunities for people to learn on that. We'll talk in a moment about the virtual platform, but we should make it a national priority that our students do well in that regard, including creating a national platform where kids that are in certain areas where these programs may not be available could access advanced programs in mathematics and sciences and do so just whether or not their public schools have the resources to provide it to them. More importantly, if you want to ensure that we have more teachers that have majored in the subject in the classroom, in essence, more people who major in chemistry becoming chemistry teachers. More people who major in biology becoming biology teachers. And right now that becomes an impediment in many parts of our country because of teacher certification requirements. We should incentivize states to, to, to treat folks who have graduated from the subject matter as highly qualified instructors in compliance with federal law. We should promote, we should promote voluntary pre-K scholarships. In essence, take a portion of the money that we spend now on Head Start and use it not to fund programs, but to fund students. Use that money to actually create scholarships so that students that are eligible can take a voluntary pre-K program somewhere in the country. I am fortunate my child actually got to, got to, all of my children got to begin at three years of age. But if we can get more kids into school at three and four, you will see a dramatic difference in school performance as all the science indicates. We should make it affordable for them to do it, and we should fund students, not programs, empower parents to put their kids in the best setting possible. One of my favorite programs here in Florida is the McKay Scholarship. 
It basically provides a scholarship for children with disabilities so that their parents can put them in the school of their choosing. It has been a phenomenal success in our state. Yes. It should be replicated nationally. Yes. There should be a national student with disability scholarship. And we can fund that by using existing IDEA funding. In essence, once again, we will not be blocked, not necessarily just funding programs, but funding students. Put this money in the hands of the parents and allow parents to choose the best environment possible for them to learn and succeed. Finally, the one I really want to talk about the most, because it's the one I'm proudest of and I think is most innovative, is the natural virtual learning platform. Let me tell you what that means. It basically means this. In many parts of our country, whether you live in a rural setting or an underfunded school district, there are limitations on the coursework they can provide. But imagine in this day and age of the iPhone application, if in fact there existed a platform that you could log on to and take classes online on subjects that your school doesn't teach, but that you want to learn. Imagine that same platform being available for teachers to download lesson plans and guest lecturers. In essence, ima imagine the entire collection of all of human knowledge deposited in one single place and available to every single American student and every single American teacher. That is not outside the realm of the possible. In fact, it should have been done a long time ago. And it, what I encourage, or what we propose, is that the federal government, in combination with the private sector, and all of these educationally uh, geared foundations, set up a national competition and award this national platform to the best available program, a program that we can make available to students all across America, homeschoolers, people living in rural areas, kids who go to schools that perhaps don't have uh, Spanish classes. You can take a Spanish class online. Online learning is the future, and we should have the 21st century world-leading platform to do so. It should be a top priority of the federal government to encourage and incentivize that, and the sooner the better.